to have proper ideal carbon composting ratio, you're looking for somewhere between 25 and 30 to 1. The, the, the CN ratio, carbon to nitrogen, the carbon's always on the left and the nitrogen's always on the right in, in the ratio. So about 25 to 30 carbon to 1 nitrogen is the optimal uh, amount. So, you know, if you, if you watch you know, composting uh, videos and if you've gone to a co composting workshop, you know, you've got your, you've got your, you know, your greens and your browns and, and your moisture and all this, and you're, you're trying to mix it all up. And so, uh, and so as we think about this uh, carbonaceous diaper, where the, the sweet spot of not having smell, of having enough carbon but not so much carbon that you're, you're wasting carbon. You don't want to waste carbon, but you need enough carbon is around 25 to 30 to 1. If you don't have enough carbon, you're going to get odors. And that's one of the nicest things. People always ask me, well, how, how am I going to know that, that it's time to put in more carbon, whatever? <laughs> Trust me, you'll know. Follow your nose. Follow your nose. Your nose will tell you. And if your nose is telling you... Um, we don't have enough carbon, then you add carbon. And, and so this whole process is, yes, there's science to it, but there's all, also art to it. So there's, there's some objective, empirical stuff. There's a lot of subjective. And, and all I can say is that as you start down here, you'll start getting a, a feel for it. The, the critical thing to understand is that if you're putting in a low, um, a low carbon material, because what's coming out of the back end of the cow is so high in nitrogen, it's going to take a lot more material to soak up, to keep that CN ratio at 25 or 30 to 1. If you're starting with a carbon base of material that's a low carbon uh, ratio, high carbon ratio doesn't take as much uh, material. But that doesn't mean you don't want to use a low carbon. It just means you have to be aware that maintaining that CN ratio is going to be different with different kind of properties. So let's just drill down on some of these uh, carbon sources and, and think about the differences. One is sawdust. <clears throat> sawdust is 500 to 1. Why? Because sawdust only comes from the stem of a tree. Uh, generally, when you get sawdust, you're, 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 you're milling lumber. You're not milling twigs and, and, and little you know, leaves. You're, you're, you're in the stem of the tree. So that's kind of the highest CN ratio, 500 to 1. Um, wood chips without leaves are about 300 to 1. The beauty of that is you're getting a lot of bark. You're getting a lot of little, little twigs and buds and the stems of plants. And then as you move with ch chips with leaves, then you're moving more like to 200 to 1. Especially, you know, if the leaves, if it's a deciduous tree and you've got a lot of, you know, green, green leaves wrapped up in it. Uh, so you're in a 200 to 1. Straw is about 150 to 1. Junk hay. So you're, you're, you know, you get some old junky, moldy, rained on, whatever, junky hay is going to be about 35 to 1. Now you see at 35 to 1, you're approaching that magic 30 to 1 ratio, which is why something like really high quality hay, like, like alfalfa hay, if you just spray water on it, it'll compost right in the bale, right? Because it's about 30 to 1 CN ratio sitting in the bale. Then leaves, like deciduous leaves, like you'd get from a, like a municipal leaf dump. A lot of you know, cities are you know, vacuuming up leaves and, and they've got a lot of landscape debris and, and leaf material, especially in the fall when they're vacuuming up leaves on the edge of the road that people have swept up. Those leaves are about 35 to 1. So they're about like junk hay. As you look at these different CN ratios, you got to realize that there's, there's going to be a different volume of material you're going to use you know, throughout the process. Now, each of these materials also has a different property in its ability to compact or, or, or how, it, how, how it fits together in the, in the carbonaceous diaper itself. Uh, for example, sawdust is fairly heavy, and so it tends to get pretty tight. Uh, it, it, it just binds together tightly. Wood chips, because they're bigger pieces and they're very friable, that tends to stay the loosest of all of them. When you start getting into your, your hay or straw, then you get these long fibers and they bind together and you get this, this kind of uh, web. It's not quite as absorptive and it, it mats together. Anybody that's ever tried to, if you ever tried to shovel out, you know, uh, 
straw bedding from something and, and the fibers. I mean, it's almost impossible to get them to, to break loose. And so you get this mat, you get this mat within. And so the, the compaction um, the compaction is really different in the different properties. If you use straw, and there are certainly uh, plenty of, of times when you want to use straw, uh, you always want it to be rained on before you use it because that breaks that waxy outer um, a hydrophobic uh, uh, coating on straw. And so whatever source of carbon you can either find or create, just realize that the carbons are, are different and, um, and it's gonna take different volumes and different types and they're gonna act differently as a diaper. They're gonna respond differently when they get walked on, scratched on, pooped on. They're gonna respond differently in the bedding pack.